The following video depicts the contemporary technique for percutaneous cryoablation of a small renal mass. Recent advances in axial imaging have resulted in increased diagnosis of small renal cortical neoplasms. The accuracy of this imaging permits for precise deployment of ablation probes. As such, percutaneous renal cryoablation has emerged as a viable option for the treatment of small renal tumors. The patient is a 39-year-old man with a history of hypertension. He also has a history of urolithiasis on the left side, which was treated with percutaneous nephrolithotomy and two treatments of shockwave lithotripsy. During evaluation for a stone disease, an asymptomatic 2-centimeter renal cortical neoplasm was discovered. The patient's small renal neoplasm is well suited for percutaneous cryoablation as it is located very posteriorly and it is not located near any critical structures such as the colon or ureter. On the contralateral side, a simple cyst is noted. CAT scan suite preparation is very simple with the helium and argon tanks placed near the cryoablation console. These are placed on the ipsilateral side as the patient's tumor. The patient positions himself on the CT gantry. He remains comfortable and alert during the entire procedure. A targeting template is placed on the patient's flank to allow for both cephalocaudal targeting as well as to precisely target the angle of needle placement. The patient remains comfortable and awake throughout. Percutaneous cryoblation is ideally performed as a collaborative effort between an interventional radiologist and a urologist. Here, Dr. Maurice Poplowski explains the targeting procedure. You can see here on the patient's back, you can see there are little markers that are all numbered. On one side, it's actually a little wider than the other, so you can't make mistakes by you know, picking the wrong one. And you just count when you pick and decide which angle you want to go on. Here, we're going to take the second one, the second marker, and we see table position I-120. So we're going to move the patient to I-120, put the laser light on, that'll bring us to this axial slice. And then we go to the second marker, we put a little X on the skin, uh, and we have our point. The semi-permeable targeting template is marked. After the template has been removed, the mark on the skin is further enhanced. The area is then prepped and draped in a typical manner. An access sheath is deployed, and using the CT scanner, it is placed immediately outside of the tumor. Needle biopsy is then performed. Typically, several biopsies are performed to assure that excellent histopathology can be gained. It is the collaborative effort of multiple skill sets, including those of the interventional radiologist as well as the urologist that optimize treatment. Using the previously placed access sheath, cryoablation probes can be precisely deployed. Several CT evaluations are often used to assure very precise deployment of the probes. Sometimes multiple probes are used to ensure a proper cryoablation of the lesion. A dual freeze cycle technique is employed. The first freeze cycle is continued until the ice bowl extends beyond the tumor in every dimension under CT scan guidance. A five minute active thaw is then performed. We're freezing now. Can you feel anything? The second free cycle is similarly performed. After the second free cycle, an active thaw of several minutes is performed until the needles can be easily removed. At this point, the passive thaw process is allowed to continue. Prior to removing the patient from the CT gantry, a second contrast enhanced CT image is taken to assure that excellent ablation has been performed. How are you feeling? Good. Are you having any discomfort? Not much pain at all. The patient kindly agreed to be interviewed several weeks after the procedure. Today I'm here with Mr. Stephen Cummings. Mr. Cummings has been very kind to join me here so that we can discuss his experience with percutaneous renal cryoablation. The purpose of this interview is to help people who have the diagnosis of small renal masses understand what that is like, as well as for those people who choose to have percutaneous cryoablation, Mr. Cummings will help us understand what it was like before, during the procedure, and afterwards. Uh, he is now three weeks after his procedure and doing very well. Uh, Mr. Cummings, so what was it like to be diagnosed with a small renal mass? 
Um, and honestly, I was terrified. I it felt like someone had just punched me in the stomach. It was a, not something you want to hear, especially at my age. I'm only 39, so I didn't expect that to come along. And um, so it kind of sends your whole world into a spin. Uh, yeah, I, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. You have to start thinking about what your options are. And so what did you do to get some information to help you make a decision? I went online, uh, did some searching for what what was available for surgeries. Most doctors told me that what I was facing was uh, partial nephrectomy. They were going to cut out a piece of my kidney along with the tumor. And it was going to be three to four weeks recovery was what I was told. And uh, that didn't help me as far as being scared because that sounds pretty terrifying in itself, you know, and uh, plus who can afford to take four weeks off to do this kind of thing. So I thought I'd look and see what kind of options were available. That's when I came across uh, your website and I uh, found out about the cryoablation. It was totally new to me. No one had even mentioned that when I was facing this. So, And you decided to go with the percutaneous cryoablation? Yes. Yeah, the least invasive one is from what I understand. So uh, it just appealed to me, especially when I looked at uh, the research that was out there, that it was um, pretty close to those other procedures as far as um, recurrence rate and, and uh, effectiveness. So I, I don't know, it just seemed like a great option for me, it seemed like a great thing to uh, choose, you know. And can you tell us a little bit about the procedure itself? Because um, I think people would really want to know exactly what you went through. Um, the day of the procedure, uh, I went into the hospital. I wasn't exactly sure what to expect and uh, nervous, of course. Um, but it was a lot less involved than I thought it would be. It was a lot easier. Another thing that I liked was... Uh, there wasn't general anesthesia, which is always causes problems for me. I always wake up feeling very nauseous and disoriented. And this was done without that, which uh, surprised me too. I wasn't expecting that. So it was pretty, overall, it was pretty easy, I would say. I mean, uh, I was conscious through the whole thing and, and I didn't feel any pain. Um, it was done a lot faster than I thought it would. I can't remember because I was a little out of it, but it seemed like it was over and probably an hour or something. Tell us about your recovery after the procedure. You know, I was walking within 20 minutes after that. I was, I felt fine. And how's your recovery been since the time you left the hospital? You're now two weeks out after the operation. I feel good. I feel great. I feel like I haven't had anything, anything done. You know, it feels like I'm, I'm completely recovered. Um, yeah, I mean, my energy is good. I feel fine.